Now, so we start with the topic. So now the next topic we are discussing about is necrotizing scleritis with inflammation. As you can see, it's uh, it involves inflammation. That's why it's so painful. So it's acute severe form of scleritis. It has acute red, red painful eye with worsening of symptoms. It usually is associated with anterior uveitis and systemic autoimmune diseases, as we already read about. So how the picture looks like, it's intense localized inflammation associated with infarction due to vasculitis, which causes sclera thinning and the shining of uveal tissue behind the sclera. So basically what happens because of the inflammation progresses to this level, there becomes an infarction. An infarction is basically due to vasculitis. There is this infarction, the, the area becomes white in color and uh, it leads to degeneration of that tissue. So basically degeneration of sclera leads to sclera thinning. As we discussed, whenever there is a sclera thinning, the uveal tissue which is behind, beneath the sclera is pigmented. So it will show the, it will show a bluish tinge. So there will be uveal tissue visible. The complications are usually glaucoma, cataract, uveitis, sclerosis, keratitis, and ventral cornea hiding. As we already discussed, the, what are the complications of scleritis? As this is a severe form, as it uh, lead to glaucoma. Glaucoma is a karayakam. Whenever there is scleritis, anti-uveitis, and inflammatory cells block at the ankle foot, and ultimately glaucoma leads to that. That is a complicated cataract. Who can say? Uveitis, the body area, sclerotic cell, sclerosing keratitis. Skin near by the cornea, who affect one of the three. Usme sclerosing hota hai. Sclerosing matlab pesity hone tak hi hai. Sclerosing keratitis. Or since this is something necrotizing, na, so when cornea involved in it, it can be cornea mein ulceration bhi ho sakta hai, and ulceration leads to mel melting also. So in this case, there was there is paper cornea melting, while in uh, non necrotizing surgeries, there was no cornea melting involved. When the same disease is without inflammation, that is sclerosmalacia perforans, it occurs in elderly females, and it is mostly associated with zero positive rheumatoid arthritis. Since it's without inflammation, it's painless, uh, painless in, uh, inflammation in which, uh, sorry, painless disease in which there is sclera thinning and melting because of ischemia and liver tissue shines through it. And in, uh, in this disease, spontaneous preparation might be there, but it's extremely rare, but it might happen. So you can see these are the pictures of necrotizing scleritis. See, this thinning of sclera and uveal tissue can be uh, seen beneath it. This is the patch I was talking about whenever there is ischemia or infarction, the area becomes white and patch. So this is the ischemia or infarction of sclera. Here also you, you can see there is no blood vessel here because of vasculitis, infarction already occurred and because of which the area become pale, white. And as the thinning progresses, it leads to this situation where there is a given tissue shining there. So if we talk about the complication in general of the entire scleritis, there are cornea complications, there are other cornea. So, cornea complications involve acute infiltrative stromal keratitis, sclerosing, sclerosing keratitis, and peripheral keratitis. In the three of them, we have talked about it. Okay. The other options are uveitis, uveal effusion, glaucoma, hypotony, and perforation. Ultimately, it might lead to perforation. So, you can see acute diffuse stromal keratitis. It's mainly stroma involved in it. और काफी डिफ्यूज एरिया इन्वॉल्व है इसमें आप देख रहे हैं कि पेरिफेरी जहां से स्क्लेराइटिस इन्वॉल्व हो रहा है उस एरिया की वेसल्स डायलेटेड भी दिख रही है उस एरिया में कॉर्निया आपको ओपेक दिख रहा है जबकि इसमें रिफ्यूज एरिया इन्वॉल्व है 
and there is peripheral ulcerative keratitis. So peripheral part, the limbus pain, ulcers, chute chute ulcer. So it is an immune mediated. These all are immune mediated complications. So I will see a preference. Now, this is especially when I talk about QP. This is a short note. So when you talk about scleromalacia perforans, you should know what is a sclera, you should know in which condition this situation occurs, and then you can talk about it. So we already say, since it's an immune-mediated procedure, immune-mediated disease, long-standing rheumatoid arthritis, seropositive would be, especially females. Females may sada color. yellow, Scleral necrotic plaque. Process or a key. There is no blood vessel in the process or a key. It's the yellowish patch. Scleral thinning is there and there is exposure of underlying, underlying sclera. Now, this is all about anterior scleritis. We are coming to posterior scleritis. So, the inflammation involving the sclera behind the equator is posterior scleritis. What are the clinical features? We can see since it, it's involving the posterior part, there might be decreased vision with or without pain. The proptosis is there. As it is posterior, the process might be possible. Because of inflammation, it pushes the eyeball forward and is proptosis. Dissected ocular movement by might be there. Posterior vitritis, if it involves the inner part of the, if the scleritis involves the inner part, it, it might also lead to vitritis. Since it's posterior, we might see disc edema, macular edema, choroidal folds, which ultimately might lead to choroidal detachment. And there's a term known as uveal diffusion syndrome, which might be. And whenever there is uveal diffusion, there might be exuberant choroid. So these are all the secrets that might happen in posterior scleritis. That's why it's very important. Scleritis is important from interior to posterior thorough. आप एंटीरियर स्लाइडेस हो, वो भी वो कॉन्फ्लेशन के चांस कर सकती हैं। आप उससे स्लाइडेस हो, तो पहले उसके कॉम्प्लिकेशंस दूसरे होंगे, जैसे कि आप देख रहे हो, ट्राइटेस, डिस्कडीमा, माक्लरडीमा, कोराइडर फोल्ड्स, कोराइडर टैचमेंट, ये तो फ्यूजन इट माइट बी एक्सीडेंटल आर्टी। सो � what is the way of the diagnosis? First thing is obviously, first of all, you diet of thermoscopy, indirect of thermoscopy, and it means that the diagnosis is there is a doubt. You can go for these and ultrasonography or CT scan. What they might show, they might show thick and sclera because since it's, uh, it's a thickness of sclera will increase. So it's, it though uh, both of the things will be visible in CT scan as well as CT scan. These are investigations. These are the signals that might happen in post you know, It might present like this. See, these, this is the exudative iodine. You can see the folds of retina and the fluid beneath. Here you can see uveal effusion syndrome. The effusion is occurring all over the peripheral areas up to the rest. These are the choroidal folds that might be present in such cases. And this is our retina mass, which is leading to all those changes. So what are the investigations in scleritis? First, everything is dependent on your clinical pictures. Okay. Itis can be used at that. It means inflammation. Scleritis, follow up as peace scleritis, follow up conjunctivitis, whatever. ना आपने repeatedly repeat के लिए देखा होगा कि मैंने बार 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 immune mediated diseases, connective tissue disorders ये सब पढ़ लिया है। तो फिर आप investigations में उसी तरह से सोचो। Full blood count is is the thing that is needed in any inflammatory infective procedure involving any such thing। तो आप एक full blood count मतलब complete that you know that we see we see आपका। ठीक है। Now we proceed with the Connected to sugar so that you can mediate this case. So first one is RA factor. Up zero positive because they go RA factor. See, they go RA factor, anti-nuclear antibodies, 
हमने बात की थी ट्यूबर क्लोसिस का टॉक्सिन भी कर सकता है डायरेक्टली इन्फेक्टिव भी कर सकता है तो दिस इज अंटोक्स इसके बाद आता है एंटी तो सॉरी आपके डिसीज क्या है आपके पेशेंट में क्या सिम्टम्स है फिर आप उस हिसाब से प्रोसीड करते हैं ओके So what is the treatment for it? In diffuse and nodular aspiritis, we go for oral NSAID, and most of the uh, mostly the oral NSAID used in this condition is indomethacin, that is 75 mg BD. It also comes in low doses, but for this we need a higher dose, that is 75 mg. Oral prednisolone to be given according to the weight, so it's one milligram per kg as a single dose. Similar suppressive agents might be needed. कई सारे ऐसे केसेस हैं जब स्टेरॉइड रिस्पॉन्सिव नहीं होते या स्टेरॉइड के इतने साइड इफेक्ट्स होते हैं कि हम स्टेरॉइड लॉन्ग टर्म पे नहीं चला सकते कि हम स्टेरॉइड नहीं ले सकते जैसे अनकंट्रोल्ड डायबिटिक ऑलरेडी डायबिटिक है पेशेंट ससेप्टिबल है और हम उसको अगर स्टेरॉइड स्टार्ट कर देंगे तो उसकी शुगर और बढ़ जाती है इन दैट केस इन दिस अपरसेप एजेंट्स यूज करते हैं जो मैं लॉन्ग टर्म के लिए स्टेरॉइड की नीड होती है तब इन्हें सप्रेसिव यूज कर सकते हैं तो व्हाट आर द इम्यून सप्रेसिव्स यूज्ड मोस्ट कॉमनली इन स्टेरॉइड्स cyclophosphamide methotrexate cyclosporine as a thyroid okay manji video bana rahi ho thode dheeme In particularly necrotizing steroids, we need to go for more aggressive treatment. So, specific steroids to be given for longer periods. It's not a single dose. You can give for the longer period. And if it is, I mean, as I told you, steroid. If long term we are using it, then its side effects are very many. In those cases, we need immunosuppressive drugs. Use such things as methotrexate or cyclophosphamide. Since we have something to mention, after soothing agent use, can now for that lubricants can be used. And ultimately, जब necrotizing इतना ज़्यादा हो जाता है कि आपकी perforation lead, it might lead to perforation. Then you can go for the scleral patch graft. Scleral patch graft is for refractory cases or in the cases in which no other options are left. Okay, so we can go for scleral patch graft. And in those things also, we have to give. Uh, immunosuppressive agents because we want our graft to stay longer or stay forever rather than getting graft failure. So we need to start with immunosuppressive in those cases also. Okay. And what is the treatment in posterior scleritis? Since it's posterior scleritis, this, uh, the treatment more or less is. You can say that steroid is mainstay, but There are certain conditions we can't give steroids. So, we have a non-steroid region. We have a suppressor. We have to weigh out what we need to do. We can work from our NSAID. 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 So, what we need to do is we can work from our NSAID. If we can't work from our NSAID, we can work from our NSAID. So, you have to give all the steroids to the steroids. Okay? So, in the posterior steroids, there are systemic NSAIDs. Other steroids, immunosuppressive therapies. As I already said, the cyclophosphamide methotrexate is a thiopram. These are what you use for such a. But more importantly, because posterior sclerosis is quite aggressive, in that in those cases, you have IV methylprednisolone as pulse therapy. IV methylprednisolone, we do. We have one gram of the solution powder. We dilute it and around 
200 ml NS की बोतल में आप उसको डाइल्यूट करते हो और या फिर 500 ml NS की बोतल में भी डाइल्यूट कर सकते हैं। We push the injection in the 500 ml NS and we start giving it IV for at least three to four hours or maybe up to six hours. इतनी स्लो हमको इंजेक्शन देना है एंड मीन वाइल द आई वी विथ हाइपर टेस्ट वन अपन दे रहे हैं उस ड्यूरेशन में बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट है कि हम पेशेंट का बीपी चेक करते रहें उसकी पल्स रेट चेक करते रहें बिकॉज़ देर आर साइड इफेक्ट्स विथ आई वी विथ हाइपर टेस्ट यू गिव इट वेरी फास्ट इट माइट हैव सर्टेन कार्ड that you have to up to four to six hours, and then also up her hunte ya her aadi hunte. Then up uski BP monitoring karo, then pulse monitoring karo immediately. Usually, hum IV help karte the, so pulse help mein hum three days continuous consecutive karte hain. Usually prefer karte hain ki hum same time pe dein. Hamne agar morning mein eight o'clock bhi hai, hum next day bhi monitor karenge morning mein eight o'clock bhi dein. Or three days hum regular dein. Then we can shift four. But initially, IV methylpred to be given up for three days. It's not like we can take it for three days and take it for three days. Okay. Subconjunctival injection is contraindicated and topical steroids are not that effective because we don't have to go to the post-trial. That's why post-trial slide is mainly treatment systemic. IV form may be oral or IV form may be systemic antibiotic. Infection to be treated with systemic antibiotics. So here we have covered your topic, doctor's scleritis. Now the another another topic that is staphylococcus. So um, what is staphylococcus? First thing, it is characterized by an ectasia of outer folds, cornea, or sclera, or both of the eye, with an incarceration of uveal tissue. तो मैं अगर आपको ऐसी बताऊं तो जो कॉर्निया है कॉर्निया के इधर वाला पार्ट स्क्लेरा हुआ कॉर्निया या फिर ये स्क्लेरा जो इसका पेरिफ्री का पार्ट है या फिर दोनों के इन्वॉल्वमेंट की वजह से तो उसकी थिनिंग होने लगती है एक्टेजिया होने लगता है तो पीछे से यूवियल टिश्यू इनकार्सरेट करता है जैसे अगर कॉर्निया परफोरेशन हुई ऐसी हो तो यूवियल टिश्यू उसके बीच में से ऐसे आके निकलने की कोशिश करेगा है ना तो ये बनाता है और क्या करता है इसको स्टेफाइन होता है ये होता क्यों है Beginning of the eyeball due to any inflammatory or degenerative diseases involving these structures along with raised eye. जब पेशेंट की eyeball को कोई सुजेस है कॉर्निया अल्सर, कॉर्निया अल्सर बहुत बड़ा होता है। फिर कॉर्निया अल्सर की वजह से कॉर्निया की थिनिंग होती है। थिनिंग इतनी ज़्यादा हुई और पीछे से प्रेशर बढ़ रहा है। इन्फेक्शन तो आपका यूवियल टिश्यू, आयरस वगैरह सब पुश कर रहे ह� इंक्रीज आय होती है वैसे तो आपकी जो आईपॉल की है ये बिगनी हो जाती है इस इसकी वजह से जो एक ट्यूशन बन जाता है उसको स्टेफाइल होना चाहिए आप इस टाइग्राम में देख सकते हैं अगर ये एंटीरियर पार्ट वाले पार्ट यहाँ पर से यूवियल टिश्यू और ये ये कॉर्निया अल्सर को इंसर्ट हुआ है ना लिम्बस पे और लि� ये वाला जो कहलाता है ये एंटीरियर स्टेफाइल होना चाहिए। When the limbus part, limbus के पीछे होती है अपनी सीलरी बॉडी और ये। जब limbus वाले पार्ट में इनफॉरमेशन होता है, उसमें भी नहीं होती है, उसकी वजह से ये वाली शुरू कुछ बाहर की तरफ कुछ होता है, रेज डायर की की वजह से, तो उसको कहते हैं इंटरगैलरी। सीलरी होता है जब � equator, equatorial leg के लिए वाला part equator है, posterior आप बताएं posterior slide, वो posterior से फाइल होता है, इस posterior bone पे होता है इसलिए। तो now we come to the dealing of staphyloma. So anterior staphyloma can be of two type, partial or total. ये वाला जो आपका diagram था, इसमें partial हो रहा है ना, और इस वाले में total अब इस डायग्राम में देखिए टोटल कॉर्निया विद अलोंग विद स्क्वेरा इंवॉल्व हो चुका है पूरा एंटीरियर पर ये एंटीरियर वाले पार्ट में तो व्हाट इस द कॉसेस जब परफेक्टेड स्लपिंग कॉर्नियल अल्सर होता है ये जिसे परफेक्टेड कॉर्नियल अल्सर हो उसके ऊपर सीडो कॉर्निया बनते हैं सीडो कॉर्निया में बेसिकली क्� तो 
यहाँ पर ऐसे इसमें इस परपरेशन हुआ सूर्य रिंग में इसमें परपरेशन हुआ तो परपरेशन की वजह से पीछे से यूवे टिश्यू तो आगे आएगा बट मेरी कॉर्निया कोशिश करेगी कि उस पर एक लेयर बना दे ताकि वो जो कंटेंट है आपका बाहर न ना हो उसको क्या कहते हैं सीडो कॉर्निया सो सीडो कॉर्निया इट इज इंटरनली लाइन बाय आयरस जो प्रोट्यूजन स्टार्ट हुआ ग्रेजुअली हेलो नमस्ते सोनी जी कैसे हैं 